So let's go ahead and uh, let's introduce our topic today is Uranus embracing your oddness. We think of Uranus, first of all, as a, a, a planet that's way out there, right? It's not considered a very personal planet. It's a slow-moving planet. And we draw it with a certain symbol. And we can look at the screen and see the symbol that we use for Uranus. And if you're looking at your chart, this is the symbol that you're looking for. This would indicate where Uranus is positioned in your astrology chart. And it's a very interesting. This is something new. Uh, I learned it from Robert Glasscock. He's a very excellent astrologer in Arkansas. And he did a whole lesson on just interpreting the little glyph that represents each planet and what it means. And this was so fascinating to me. He said, again, you have to be a little bit creative in looking at it. But it represents a woman on her haunches giving birth. And it's matter giving birth to spirit. That's big O that we see there at the bottom. And so giving birth is pretty darn exciting. We congratulate people on giving birth. It's, oh my God, this is so much fun. But those of us who have birth, we know that it's a wild adventure. It's not necessarily just one happy, happy story. It has a lot of, you know, roller coaster aspects to it. Well, this is the concept that we're talking about today, where you're giving birth, where you're different. Think of the person, the first person to wear a mohawk hairdo. I guess we have to go back maybe to the Indians, but you know, wherever, wherever it started, the first person that decided that uh, not going to church was okay, the first person that decided that, yes, I can be divorced and that would be okay. These are all people, and I'm not saying we have to approve or applaud everyone, so to speak, because sometimes we say to people, you shouldn't have any children, right? We have opinions about that. So good. we're not going to good and bad or what's right or wrong. We're just suggesting it's a very strong birthing energy with this aspect of separation that goes with it. Now, we're talking a little theory here. I certainly understand. Be aware. It's just going to be a little, we have to get some fundamentals in place here over the next you know, 20 minutes before we can kind of go on to the interpretive side of it. And those of you who were so fortunate to be around in 1969, and buying albums, you probably bought the album, The Fifth Dimension, uh, the, the Let the Sun Shine In, better known as you know, the Age of Aquarius. Uh, there's a, a movement that emerged right about that time period where we started singing that the Age of Aquarius, ruled by Uranus, the planet, was coming. And those who lived it know a lot of interesting things happened socially at that point. There were a lot of movements, creative movements that came in that were very threatening to certainly those that empower and that seemed a little scary to many of us at the same time. Like, could that be? Could, could, could we change the world, so to speak, or could the world change that quickly? So I want you, we have two things going on here. We just talked about what Uranus looks like, the symbolism of it. We're going to be talking today about where Uranus is, is at your chart right now. But the bigger backdrop is we're in the age of Aquarius. And the age of Aquarius is one of birthing, but separation, having to leave stuff behind as well. Or another way, leaving the mothership, right? You're going to go off on your own, you're going to leave the mothership. And that could be, in today's political world, maybe that's splintering. Maybe that's the word factions. So I just want you to see, because we're living a lot of this, we can certainly see it in our media and press and what's going on. So uh, even though Uranus is uh, a planet, it's way out there, so to speak, uh, it's not as prominent in everyone's chart. But it really gets prominent when it conjoins or is closely aspected to a personal planet. So I'm picking on Richard. He's in the audience today. But we look at Uranus. Maybe you can see it up there in the uh, top right corner. I kind of put a blue arrow on it. His Uranus sits very closely with the one degree of his moon. So that makes all of a sudden Uranus a very important planet for you. Maybe for somebody else not as much, but because it sits close to the moon, which is the fastest moving body we're looking at, very personal. The eighth house, and this I could say to anybody, the eighth house, any planets that are there, starts referring to things you don't openly talk about. Generally. It's confidential matters. But when you put Uranus there, 
You want to make a movement out of something. You want everyone to generally know. So Richard is the one, right? We have to take a gamble when you bring Richard to the dinner table. Because he may bring up a topic that may make you squirm, that may make you uncomfortable, that may be politically sensitive. So I, I just want you to see how you can quickly, if you're into just learning astrology, how just knowing something about a planet uh, gives it more life or more buoyancy uh, uh, in a chart. So that was just a quick example, just one said, Let's come back to the theories about the, the basic information about Uranus. It was discovered around the 1781. Interestingly, that was, most of us think about some of the industrial revolution. There's a lot of controversy about, uh, you know, what date the revolu industrial revolution started and when did it stop. But I think it's definitely in that era of it. And it was a period of rapid change, right? The machine emerged. The machine emerged and became dominant over the person. Factories, uh, we can talk about the steam engine. And I have a whole thing about schematics there. Can you see that vision in the top right? The idea of being able to figure out, if I do this and I connect it to this, and if we do that, then all of a sudden this together is going to create a certain effect. So it's the ability to pull a lots of different pieces of information together into one cohesive body and then to make something happen. But the machine started dominating life. I think most of us would agree that it was during this time period that really was the birthplace of capitalism. When we understood the machines could make things faster, more money could be made, blah, blah, blah. We kind of get the concept there. Uh, the other aspect that was happening around 1781 is there was an emotional void in the arts. Architecture became much more linear. We stopped doing all these curlicues and embellishments. Even in the art world, we became much more, not literally photographic, but the idea is they painted and they drew exactly what they saw. And so we judged art by the fact how well did they replicate how it exactly looks. So there was a little devoid of emotion. Now, this is, I'm oversimplifying a little bit to get the point here. But what's going on in the world at the time the people on Earth look up and then can identify a planet in the sky and name it, and be very aware the astronomers are doing this, not the astrologers, the astronomers are doing this, it reflects that planet that reflects what is going on. 